southwestern Peru to the Sechuta Desert. Well, I explore the coast of Peru and eventually <coughs> head into the Andes again. The higher I climb, of course, the weather deteriorates. It's my life here in South America, it seems. <laughs> I've got to be careful. A wild guanaco dart and scurry in front of me and almost hit one. Here we have to worry about deer. There it's guanaco. Um, after a while, I look down at my GPS and it says I'm at 16,000 feet. Oh my God, the highest I've ever been on that motorcycle. After a while, I'm standing on the saddle between two peaks, two snow-capped peak mountains, and I'm staring down at the lost city of the Incas, Machu Picchu. And I imagine what it took to uh, build such an amazing place, amazing city in such an impossible place. Community, teamwork, passion, commitment, all those things. And then only 100 years later to have it lost for about 500 years. Now it's here in Machu Picchu I meet fellow motorcyclist, Jeremiah. Now, Jeremiah, is, uh, he's also on a Dakar. He's from Colorado. <clears throat> Though the scope of his journey is a little different than mine, we discover that we share a common goal, and that is we want to see the Salar de Uyuni. Now, how many people in here know what the Salar de Uyuni is? Okay, well, that's good, because we're going to have a little geography lesson. It's <laughs> It's the largest salt flat in the world. It's in Bolivia. It's about 4,000 square miles, which is roughly the size of the state of Delaware, or a little bit bigger than the county of Los Angeles, near where I am. It also sits at about 14 to 15,000 feet in the Andes, in the Altiplano. So high and so large, it's visible from space. In fact, they use it as a target to calibrate satellites. Now, Jeremiah and I realized, we learned, that there are really two seasons in the Salar. Dry and wet. So we map out our, our route through the high plains and realize, weather permitting, we can be in the Salar in maybe 10 days. So we head out together. And we ride through those rural villages of Peru. We finally get to the border of Bolivia and cross over that uh, Lake Titicaca. I just like saying that, Titicaca. <laughs> and then in Bolivia, we go through rural villages again and big cities. And then we find what must be the only, the best road in all of Bolivia, where only 20% of the roads are paved in Bolivia. But that, soon, it's amazing what you see there, huh? Why are they always Toyotas? <laughs> <laughs> and they'll let you know, too. To do that. You know, of course, again, we get into bad weather. First a hailstorm, snowball sized hail, then snow, sleeting rain, and uh, cold. It's, it's nightfall. I never like to ride at night in South America. When we ride into Potosi, Bolivia, once the world's richest, but now simply only the highest city in the world. Now in our hotel room, we thaw out and dry and contemplate the only thing separating Jeremiah and I from achieving our dream of riding and seeing the Salar de Uni is a dirt road, a 300 mile dirt road in the middle, barren middle of nowhere. But then we wonder, is it dry? Did it get washed out in today's rains? And along with that, washed out our dream. Well, in the morning, the hotel clerk tells us, no, the, the Salar's been spared, you, you should go. So we go, and big white clouds fill you know, a very dark blue sky as we ride further and further and further from civilization. We carve through canyons and climb mountains, cross valleys. Herds of llamas dot the hills all around and then sometimes block the road in front of us. After a while, we drop down into a valley and head into a, a little village. It's more like a settlement coffee-color adobe buildings. The road deteriorates here. So Jeremiah goes to the right, and I go to the left. My bike's squirrely. I'm steady on the throttle, but my front tire then sinks. The rear tire 
spins out, my bike falls, and it's, I fall into the mud with the bike crashing on top of me. Now, I try to get loose, but it's useless because my leg is trapped under the pannier. I feel my leg and look down on it, and there's no question in my mind it's broken, busted, crashed. For I realize now I've come to the end of the road. My journey is over. For I'm certainly not going to get to the Salar, let alone Tierra del Fuego. I collapse in the mud. The high noon Bolivia sun blazes down through the visor of my helmet, though I sense a crowd gathering above me. Now, though I've come to the end of the road, and though my journey is over, what I don't realize yet, it's really just another beginning. I wait, I don't know how long, but Jeremiah returns. He's with a woman who's carrying a cardboard box that's kind of tubular shaped. And what they do is they splint my leg in this cardboard box and uh, throw me into the back of a truck and take me down the road to a medical clinic. About five minutes. Well, it's uh, more like a brick <coughs> building with a few beds. No supplies, no doctors. Now, Jeremiah finds the only phone in this town. Now, it's a radio telephone. It's affected by weather, so connections are tentative at best. So before he can confirm that the only ambulance some four hours away will come to get me, he gets cut off. So we wait in this building and wait wondering. I'm on a never-ending journey. I don't know what's going to happen. The skies darken and, and open up and it starts pouring rain. Thunder shakes the building. Lightning. Eight hours later, the ambulance shows up. Well, it's more like an old Chevy Suburban. Bad suspension and all. They throw me into the back of this and we head back on that road, that same road, which is now more like a river. And as we're cruising along, the only thing louder than the shh 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 of those noisy windshield wipers is the crashing thunder. Lightning, bright, lights up the cab where I can see the two Boliviano men in the front stuffing their mouths with coca leaves. With each bump in the road, my leg raises and comes crashing down. I scream in pain. Jeremiah, God bless him, leans forward with one hand below my knee and one hand above. He holds the pieces of my leg together for the entire journey. Twelve hours pass, and we're finally back where? In Potosi, Bolivia, the highest city in the world. We're at Daniel Bracamenti Hospital. I'm x-rayed and given pills for the pain. Now, I ask, what is this that you're giving me? And they say, well, it's like a high, strong dose of ibuprofen. And I think, my God. Here I am in one of the largest cocaine producing countries in the world. <laughs> and all they can give me is Advil for a badly broken leg. 